Sponsored by Delete Me. The Android smartphone world is one of extremes. On the high end, you've got what some would consider way too much. I'm talking folding screens, built-in pens, ultra-zoom cameras. But down in the mid-range, there's a lot of what I consider not enough. Watered-down specs and compromised experiences wrapped up in bland, forgettable designs. That's the space London smartphone maker Nothing has been trying to shake up for the past year with phones and accessories built to stand out. And now it's bringing its newest flashy phone and some new ideas to the US. I'm Michael Fisher, and I've spent the last few weeks kicking off my summer with the Nothing Phone 2. One of the things I respect about Nothing is that it really walks the walk when it comes to its design-first mission. Plucking Phone 2 from its packaging is a bit like unboxing a vinyl EP, a unique first impression in a sea of samey, recycled boxes. The included USB cable and even the SIM tool hue to the phone's transparent aesthetic, which has been carried over from last year's Nothing Phone 1. This year, the darker color option is a deep gray, which better shows off the textured accent panels beneath the Gorilla Glass 5 backplate, its edges now rounded off to make it more comfortable to hold. Yes, we'll get to the true star of the show here in a sec, but first, we gotta talk about the improvements on the other side. My biggest disappointment on last year's Nothing Phone 1 was that the design didn't extend too deeply into the software at launch. And for Phone 2, Nothing has really made up for that. It's almost completely painted over Android 13 with the most ambitious, cohesive skin I've seen since, uh, since the days of the HTC One. It's simple without being dull, and in a landscape of increasingly cartoonish software, Nothing's interface is unabashedly digital. Somehow both retro with its dot matrix font and futuristic with its strategic use of color on a mostly monochrome palette. The tweaks extend to all the corners of the interface you never really think about, from the volume slider to the fingerprint prompt to the big folders and oversized quick toggles. In particular, I love the option to add widgets to the always-on display, which hue to the same style as everything else. You know, generally, with a candy bar phone, I just kind of set up my launcher the same way every time, but nothing made me rethink what would work well and also look good. Oh, and the customizations also extend to the acoustic. The camera capture sounds are deeply satisfying in their chunky, chiptune kind of way. And you also get 20 ringtone and alert sounds that run the gamut from endearing Star Wars droid to horror machine from the Matrix. There's space for your own creativity too, thanks to a beatbox style app you can use to build your own ringtones. I didn't think I'd use this at all, but it's surprisingly fun and surprisingly easy to go a whole 10 minutes building your own ringtones. But there is a slight lag to this app that makes it hard to maintain a rhythm. I swear that's not just an excuse. So I, I hope nothing can sort out whatever's causing that. The rest of the phone is exactly as speedy as you'd expect, given the silicon under the hood, which I've covered many, many times here on the channel, and well, which in my view is as close to an SOC MVP as you can get on Android. Okay, let's talk about the disco lights. Nothing's really leaning into the whole digital disconnect thing. You know, this notion that we should all take our eyes off our screens more often. And the new Glyph LEDs on the back are meant to make it easier to stay aware without getting sucked in. To be honest, I don't really buy that explanation. You know, I, I think the truth is that nothing relies on flashing lights to set its phones apart. And so it added a few little features to try and legitimize it. But, as luck would have it, my Phone 2 review sample arrived just as I was leaving for a 4th of July weekend in coastal North Carolina, a place where I really did want to look at my phone as little as possible. So, when I wasn't shooting camera samples like these, yes, I'll show you more in a moment, I swallowed my skepticism and trained myself to put the phone face down when I stopped using it. I set the glyphs only to alert me for telegram and text messages. No thanks, Gmail. And I didn't have to worry about Do Not Disturb, because when the screen is down, it'll automatically silence the speaker in favor of the flashes. 
There's a new ambient light sensor back here that adjusts the glyph brightness so it won't blind you in a dim room. And I actually made good use of the glyph timer to keep an eye on how many beers my girlfriend and I could drain before it was time to go pick up our topsail steam pot. The bar here gradually ticks down until the timer goes off, kind of like a fuse burning out. When I flew back into LaGuardia, I used the Uber integration to see how much time I'd have to wait for my driver. Here, the glyph gradually fills up as your car approaches, like a progress bar. And up on my Brooklyn rooftop, I fired up the timer again to make sure I didn't burn the first burgers and brats of the season. The more you use the glyphs, the more features pop up to delight you. Nudge the phone while it's charging, and it'll show you the battery level. Talk to the Google Assistant, and it'll okay, light up Google. when it hears the hot word. What's going on? Turn the volume up or down, you can see that back here, too. That's all just neat. If I have complaints, they're in the details. You know, I don't want to have to put the phone down to activate the timer. I just want to hit a button. And when I do put it down, I think users deserve a much more robust screen protector than this easily scratched, cheap plastic nonsense. For a phone that spends so much of its time on its face, this is a legitimate miss. Also, as someone who uses Mobile Hotspot a bunch, it would be great to get a glyph notification for that, you know, to remind me that it's on, because I do leave it on by accident pretty often. And then there's the perennial pain point of all esoteric phone features. I want to use this with my NYC Ferry app to see when the next boat is, or with DoorDash to track my food delivery. But developers have to proactively add that support. Don't expect that to be a quick process. And because I know some Killjoy out there is going to ask, is any of this really practical or pragmatic way to use a phone? No, it's not. Not in the slightest. But if that's your priority, this phone isn't built for you. You know, go buy a Moto G. Even if the glyphs are just 20% useful, you know, it's just cool and different, man. And for a certain kind of customer, like me, yeah, that's enough. I got some good news for those of you who think we tubers talk too much about cameras. There's not an awful lot to say here. That's because you can spend a hundred bucks less than you would for a Nothing Phone 2 for a Google Pixel 7a, whose pictures will almost certainly be better on average. For a rough approximation, see these comparison photos shot side by side with my Pixel Fold. But if the camera is your biggest priority, you probably already know that. Over a couple weeks of very casual summertime shooting, the only times I found myself wishing for a Pixel were the occasions I wanted to zoom, or when I was trying to combat some truly brutal backlighting. Oh, by the way, in the depths of night, you can use the glyphs as the world's biggest phone oh. camera spotlight. Gotta clean that mirror. <laughs> and the lone splash of color on the whole phone will let your subjects know when you're filming a video. Altogether, I find this camera to be plenty for the kind of shooting most folks will be doing. It's not a creator camera, and it's not meant to be. Here's a few more samples without voiceover, so you can draw your own conclusions. And don't forget, if you don't like the photos you take with the Nothing Phone 2, you can always just delete them. And if that sounds like a ridiculous thing to say that could only be a paper-thin segue into a sponsor spot, yeah, well, you got me. You probably already know that your personal information is being bought, sold, and traded online. And if you didn't, well, sorry to give you the bad news. In fact, this privacy problem is so huge that you might even think, why bother trying to address it? It's impossible. But it's not. This video is sponsored by Delete Me, a simple subscription service that gives control of your personal data back to you. Just tell them who you are, and they go to work scrubbing your private information from the web. I'm talking current and past addresses, names of your family members, property and court records. In seven days, you get a privacy report like this. Yep, this is my actual report. And just look at how many data brokers had my information. No wonder I get so many spam calls. 
Well, thanks to Delete Me, all these brokers are now removing my information. I didn't have to spend 10 hours doing it myself, and Delete Me will automatically repeat the process every three months. So take back control and delete your personal data from the web. Visit joindeleteme.com slash Mr. Mobile and use code Mr. Mobile for 20% off. Thanks to Delete Me for sponsoring this video. Disclosure. Nothing sometimes hosts cocktail parties for media, and at each of these events, I enjoy a drink on Nothing's Dime and make it a point to tell Carl Pay that, hey, nothing should really make a foldable, man. Well, he's not convinced thus far. And while I disagree with his stated reasoning in interviews, I'll leave that for the Threads version of myself to argue. Feel free to follow. And I'll admit that by omitting that hinge, nothing does reap the rewards of a more conventional design. I mean, the battery lasts all day and then some. In two weeks of testing, I've never run it dry before bedtime. There's pretty good dust and water resistance, pretty quick wired charging. There's also wireless and reverse wireless charging. By the way, I've been using the Nothing Ear 2 since release, and despite their lackluster battery life, they've become my go-to earbuds because they do a good job at pretty much everything, and they stand out while they're doing it. Bet you saw this one coming. That's also my verdict on the Nothing Phone 2. Yes, there are a few bugs. The screen wakes up a bit too readily in my pocket, and the glyphs don't always fire when the phone gets put face down. There's a rumored bug fix coming in a few days that I hope fixes those. It's also not yet clear how well Nothing will handle important issues like service and repair, or how seriously it'll take its commitment to software and security updates. It is ultimately a startup, after all. But it's not just any startup. It's led by one of the founders of one of the most influential enthusiast brands in mobile, surrounded by a deep bench of talent brought over from that same outfit. OnePlus put out a lot of hype, sure, but it also put out a lot of pretty great smartphones. And based on my experience with Phone 2, I expect the same from nothing. The Nothing Phone 2 is available unlocked starting at $599 US. This video was produced after several weeks with a Nothing Phone 2 review sample provided by Nothing, but as always, the subjects of my reviews do not get copy approval rights, early previews, or any editorial input whatsoever. Please subscribe on YouTube and follow me on threads at the Mr. Mobile and Captain Two Phones if that's the kind of content you'd like to see more of. Finally, if you want a different kind of fun phone, check out my recent reviews of the Motorola Razr Plus and Google Pixel Fold to see why I love my foldables so much. Until next time, from Michael Fisher, thanks for watching and stay mobile, my friends. <laughs>